Hello, good people. So we know the modern world is absolutely crazy. It's fantastic. We got a lot of great things. The quality of life is second to none, but it's crazy and it's intimidating and it's a lot for people to handle. So this, in my opinion, is why I'm seeing a return to the classics, why we're seeing a lot of people go back to the ancients for philosophy and say, well, we don't know any philosophy. They knew the philosophy. Let's look to them. This video is about ancient philosophy. I support it 110%. That is the normal disclaimer. However, we do got our own philosophy here, okay? The grass isn't always greener. However, I feel I have to make this video. I have to make this video because I was researching for another video that came out. I don't wanna attract any more people to this way of thinking. So I'm just gonna say I was researching for another video and this particular group followed the teachings of Mayat. Mayat, Mat, Maye. However you want to pronounce it. It is a goddess. She is a goddess. She is a very beautiful goddess, more of a concept than anything else. When she comes to form on earth, she comes as a beautiful young girl. And she teaches, she teaches what is right, what is good, what is the proper form of behavior? What is the way in which we can act to have stability and peace? She is order, she fights chaos. She was created with the first word. This is Egypt, by the way. I don't think I've ever said that it's Egypt. Ancient Egyptian goddess of order, of justice, the personification of truth. It is like the Tao, it is like the Logos. We talked about this briefly on the video about Marcus Aurelius and Gladiator. Anyway, when she comes to earth, she comes in the form of a pretty young girl, but she is the foundation for everything else in Egyptian mythology the absolute foundation. She's often depicted as a foundation stone. Ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead. Do you have this book? Eh. You can hear it on YouTube, actually, if you don't want to read it. It's interesting because it goes through all these hieroglyphs. It goes through all these hieroglyphs. And you see right here, this is, she's often also represented by a feather and the deceased heart is weighed against the feather. And if it's lighter than the feather, then it goes on to heaven. And if it's heavier, you get thrown to a moot, the crocodile. And the crocodile god will eat your heart. And so why are people looking to this? Well, ancient Egypt went on for thousands of years. I believe it is the longest running civilization, intact civilization to date by a, by a long shot. We joke that we are Rome too, that we are in the black iron prison that goes all the way back to ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Uh, but it fell. You know what I mean? Rome fell. There was 500 years of just disaster. People flinging shit at each other. Pretty much we're monkeys in a zoo. I'm going to edit that out. That's not very nice. That's not a nice thing to say about us. About Western civilization. There were growing pains. Let's just say that about Western civilization. There were growing pains. Anyway, ancient Egyptian civilization went on for thousands of years because it had stability. It had a very strict social hierarchy and everybody was meant to follow the principles of Mayat. So everybody from Pharaoh all the way down to the lowliest peasant was supposed to follow these 42 principles and it kept the social order of Egypt, or so they say. Egypt was very ordered because of the yearly flooding of the Nile, which came right on cue, except for one time where it didn't, and that was the Egyptian Dark Ages, and that sort of, they descended into chaos because they didn't have enough food, et cetera, et cetera. So when the environment is turning against you, your principles, they didn't really help. What helped them out of that was technology. To clarify, the Egyptians went through a period of climate uncertainty when the flooding of the Nile decreased. This is a great doc on that. Side note, the sun went away in 536 AD, so don't think for a moment some random devastating thing can't happen to us too. It's all fun and jokes until the cannibalism starts. Okay, don't worry about it. The sun probably won't go away and the rivers will continue to flow. That's okay. Let's just say, because this is what is accepted, that the principles of Mayat were the reason that Egypt was able to maintain order for so long. The scribes, uh, the, the scribe class, they were in service to Mayat, the priests and so forth. She didn't really have her own temples, but she was depicted as a pillar in all the other temples because apparently 
this is the basis from which all of the other gods got their power, except for Ra. And she's often depicted next to Ra going across the sky. Ra is the sun god. This could be because they are all uh, agricultural, agricultural civilization. So the sun god is very important. You may recognize the god Ra from Gods of Egypt. He was played by Jeffrey Rush. And every night he drove his barge across the sky, fighting chaos and ensuring that the sun would rise again. Mayet was not featured in this movie, which is probably for the best. However, her wings are here in this shot. Now, it wasn't a good movie, but I suggest you watch it anyway because they went for it. It's entertaining. I like to see Hollywood really try and fail. I can't stand it when they half-ass things. Like, no, go for it. See what happens. Nevertheless, the, the battle between chaos and order is ancient and it goes before the ancient Egyptians. And we face it to this day. Now, she is that concept as a whole. There was that. There was the, this is a concept. This is the Tao. This is the logos. This is something greater. This is the whole of society must be in service to her and to it. Even language itself is in service to Mayat. Mayat is married to the god Toth, the god of wisdom and knowledge. He was later known as Hermes to the Greeks. You may know him from the Kabbalion, which is available for free online. The Kabbalion is foundational for the new age and spiritual movements from like the mid 1800s to the present. So pretty interesting stuff. Look, maybe the Kabbalion is ancient knowledge. Maybe it's European beatniks. Don't think too much about it. It's just an FYI. These are living ideas. It's not going to be on the test. The important takeaway is that order is joined with wisdom and knowledge in ancient Egyptian mythology. And for some reason, even in ancient Egyptian mythology, cosmic order was on the side of humans. So think about this. But also, on a personal level, there were these 42 laws, these 42 negative sayings, because in the Book of the Dead, I have a jewel on mine. Do you have a jewel on yours? You have a jewel in your heart. That's where your jewel is. Anyway. <laughs> in the ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead, you have, there are these spells this is they call them spells and basically this is what you are supposed to do as you die as the soul ascends or doesn't ascend and one of those things is that you go before what's really interesting and I think I pointed this out on the CP podcast is that for hundreds of years we didn't really know what the hieroglyphs said because that language was no longer spoken and we think that you know this language is forever. People are going to speak it forever. First and foremost, if you don't write your language down, it's only a matter of time before the language is forgotten. So most of the languages that have ever been spoken, they are forgotten. And then even if you do write it down, well, now we have a code. Now we have a code to break. And they didn't break the code of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. They didn't break the code ever. They found the Rosetta Stone. And that was a Ptolemy um, from the Greek Ptolemies. So the Greek rulers of Egypt had made this carving, this stone carving, and it had Greek on it, and it had Coptic on it, and it had ancient Egyptian on it. And that's how we translated the hieroglyphs. It doesn't matter. Rosetta Stone, that's all you have to worry about. Aha, here we go. Here we go. So, so part of the many rituals, the, the ancient Egyptians really considered death, and they really thought about death, and they sort of built their whole lives around having this judgment after they died. And this book is, is super intense and they were expected to know this book so they could ascend to the reed field um, or whatever. And so if you recited these 42 things that I have not done this, I have not done this, it's a negative. It's not, I, I do do this. It's, I have not done this. Um, you recite them and you're honest then your heart is lighter than a feather. And if it's heavier than the feather, then you get eaten. Your, your heart gets eaten and that's it, that your soul is gone. It's it, your soul dies. Uh, but if you do recite them and your heart is lighter than a feather, then you go to the reed fields and you get to be with your family and your dog is there and like your favorite foods are there. Everything's cool. The reed fields are awesome. Like just, it's where you wanna be, the reed fields. You don't wanna have your heart eaten by the crocodile. Let's look at these here. Let's look at these. First off, you have to you have to declare these before various gods. You have to declare these before 42 different gods. So it's complicated. So what do we got here? I have done no falsehoods. I have not robbed. I have not been rapacious. I have not stolen. I have not killed men. Oh, here we go. 
not destroyed food supplies. I have done no crookedness. I have not stolen the god's offerings. Is the god really going to eat them? Let's be honest here. What if we steal the god's Oreos? Is it okay? Can we come back? Is the god going to miss them? Yo, people be stealing the god's Oreos every Christmas time. I don't want to point any fingers. You know who you are. Stealing the god's offerings probably wouldn't make it to the reed fields. I'm just saying. I have not told lies. I have not taken food. I have not been sullen. Mm. I have not transgressed. I have not killed the sacred bull. I have not committed perjury. Is that, is that false witness? I have not stolen bread. I have not eavesdropped. I have not babbled. Not disputed except as concerned my own property. Uh, I have not committed homosexuality. That's not nice. That That's very unkind, ancient Egypt. Transgressed. I feel I've seen transgressed before. See, he said that to so, oh, white teeth who come forth from Falium and this one here. Oh, Demolisher, who came forth from Zwas. So like, you got to tell them both, I guess. I'm not transgressed. I have not been hot-tempered. I have not been deaf to the words of truth. There's a lot here. I have not been quarrelsome, unduly active, impatient. I have not transgressed. This is a third transgressed we have here. I have not made conjuration against the king. No hexing. I have not waited in water. Why you can't wait in water? I don't understand why you can't wait in water. I'm not wealthy except my own property. I have not blasphemed God in my city. So he didn't do a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of things he just didn't do. And so we see that these, these laws predated the Ten Commandments by a long shot. So did the Ten Commandments come from this? I mean, a lot of these are repeats. Let's talk about it. A lot of these are repeats. You could probably condense them down into about 10. I imagine someone back in the day, maybe the Hebrews were looking at this and they were like, you know what? Do we need 42 of these? What if we had 10? And you know what? Maybe it came off the mountain. It's important. Maybe we got this off the mountain. You got it off a mountain? That's almost unbelievable. Yeah, it came off. It was uh, carved in stone. We got it off a mountain. Sure, it's fine. Wherever... Wherever you get your code, it's fine. As long as it's a decent code, I really don't care. It doesn't bother me. As long as it's a good code and you treat others right. Some people, their code is one thing. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. It's pretty simple. I like how we go from 42 to 10 to 1. It's like, look, we just need the one. Would I do this to myself? Well, I won't do it to other people. Do I insult myself? Well, I won't insult other people. A lot of people treat themselves pretty bad. So sometimes you need the 10. You need the 42 because this person has no self-respect. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Well, I'm terrible to myself. Okay, well, go with the 10 then, not you. <laughs> this code is a little complicated for you. You go with the 10, you know, you fall back on it. But yeah, and then we look back and we see that the pyramids probably weren't built with slave labor. They were probably built because everyone in the community was, uh, was how do I say this? They were inspired to build these great temples to Pharaoh, to death, to whatever. And so everyone got together and did what they were supposed to do. Now, of course, a few people are mad about it. You know, they probably didn't like the work day and now they got to complain. And now three, 4,000 years later, we got to watch a movie about it, how they were enslaved and all this other stuff. It's just like, calm down. Everybody had to build for Pharaoh. You weren't special. That's fine. It's a good movie. The Ten Commandments is fantastic. This is not to hate on the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is great, especially if you actually follow them. And it's a good movie for its day, for its time. It is an epic movie. But like, you're going to hate on Egypt and you got all your stuff from Egypt? Oh, that's okay. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Who cares where you get your stuff? Get it and use it. Nobody cares. How did I get onto this? <laughs> oh, the 42 laws of Maya, which are now being used again. They're popularized again, just like people are looking to the ancients. They're looking to Marcus Aurelius. They need some sort of stability and we need stability in our time. So that's why we're looking to the ancients. They, they had a philosophy that was stable for many, many years. Well, they also had technology that was stable for many, many years as well. So Maybe one contributes to the other. We went over this in the Marcus Aurelius thing as well. Maybe because your philosophy was not the philosophy of a come up, you didn't get the technology of a come up either. We have different philosophy. We have different technology. But it doesn't mean that we can't learn a lot from what they knew. And we have learned a lot from what they know. The principles of Mayat are everywhere right now. And she as a goddess is everywhere right now. We just can't see her because the Romans adopted her. The Romans adopted her. First, the Greeks adopted her, of course. I shouldn't even said the Romans. The Greeks adopted her. 
<laughs> and then the Romans just took everything the Greeks had and were just like, Roman now. Says Greek, rubber stamp, Roman now. Roman. Roman. I like that. Roman. I like that. I like that. I like that. Roman. 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 Mm, what's that? Roman. <laughs> Who cares? That's what we do. We're Americans. We do that too. Uh, that's why we're Rome too. But then the Romans adopted her. And now we, we have the symbol. Where is the symbol? It's outside of every courthouse. It's law. The scales. The scales. The scales of justice. That's her. That's her symbol. And we see it everywhere. So just because this concept isn't well known specifically as that, it doesn't mean it's not been in use for thousands of years and never stopped being in use. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. She set the foundation for the Black Iron Prison in which we're currently living right now. Black Iron Palace. She set the foundation stone and we often don't know it. Just like we don't know where the foundation stone is in our house. Like, come on. It's just there and it's very important. So the scales of justice, that we are a society of laws. What is the scaffolding for the mind world in which we live? There's like a basement to the, our Black Iron Prison and there's a sub-basement and there's a sub-basement beneath that and we haven't even gone to the sub basement before that maybe it's built on like a volcano and the volcano is chaos but we have built order over it subscribe